Hey everyone, welcome to week 21, day four, Thursday. Now, this week has been tough. It's a little hard to get a grasp on what the idea of wholeness and the idea of part is. Sometimes we feel we can get a clearer idea of what working the part is because we associate it with detail. But, you know, the toughest part about this week is trying to understand that when we do details, when we do the tiny little part, it always has to answer back to the idea of the whole. And that's what we're concentrating on this week. So I know, I know this is kind of vague and abstract, but we have to tell our brains that they have to think about these things and we're using this week to do exactly that. So let's see how we do today. Okay, let's get started. Today, I think I'm gonna do something a bit different because yesterday was a kind of cool day for me and I'll try to explain why. I had come from a painting that kind of exhibited the way I used to develop paintings for quite some time, actually. This idea of putting drawing marks on top of my block in or on top of my second layer of paint, I want to say some people think it's about style, but it, it really isn't. Uh, that was born from almost like desperation, to be honest. It, it wasn't even about being reminiscent of Antonio Lopez or uh, Willem Coldstream or Ewan Uglo or Giacometti that I've expressed my lifelong love for. It wasn't really that. I'm not trying to capture something that's superficial about the quality of a painting or a drawing and then sort of imposing it onto my painting. No, I think that when we do that, and honestly, we try to do those things all the time, but when we do that, our painting almost rejects those things. We try to impose those very nice characteristics on our work because we see them as adornment. We see them as something that is just going to naturally make our paintings beautiful. If we just pile all those things on top of whatever we do, there's going to be something to our painting. There's going to be something interesting when we look at it. And our brain is telling us, well, when I saw a cold stream or when I saw you and Uglo, those things worked. So if I just cut and paste and put it on top of my painting, it's for sure going to work, right? It's proven. And the truth is, it doesn't. It doesn't work because paintings have a way of beautifully exhibiting what is true to themselves. And they also have a way of naturally rejecting what is fake. Uh, so all those things that we try to impose on our paintings because we are just infatuated by someone else's work, our painting that knows that it only belongs to us, you know, sees those things as very foreign intentions. And when we just forcefully try to put them into our work, our painting is going to say, no, I mean, you can put them on, but when the observer comes by and when he looks at me, he's going to know and I'm going to make sure that he knows that this is not right, that these acts of trying to make me look prettier not going to work. By the way, that was a painting talking for like 20 seconds. <laughs> but anyways, when I decided to put drawing marks on top of, like I said, my initial block in or my second layer of painting, it was about me being lost. It really was about that. It was about me feeling that bigger brushstrokes, that bigger masses of color, that bigger decisions were not going to get me close to what I wanted, that I had simply veered off the right track for so long during the execution of a painting that I was lost. I was completely lost and I was confounded by where I was. So in a way, I invoked drawing, not drawing as the ability to just make these fine little lines, but the idea of drawing, the concept of drawing, drawing as a compass in a way, drawing as the tool that I was going to use to get back on the right track, to, to find my way again to the path that in my mind I had initially carved by identifying my intent. But a painting is a long process. It could take four hours, it could take three hours, but it could be the longest three hours of your life. And in those three hours, in that limited time, whatever it may be, it could be three hours or six months, it doesn't matter. 
there are so many chances for us to get lost. It happens to me constantly, and this is not something that we should be ever ashamed of, because painting is tough. Uh, having clarity about what you want to say is very, very hard. It is normal that we sometimes are enamored by little things that we think are going to be important in the end, but that end up just being traps and detours, and that you know, when we have the ability to finally reassess our painting, we realize, oh my God, what did I do for the last two hours or two days or two weeks? I didn't really remember what I was supposed to do with this painting and I was lost. Whenever I put drawing marks in my painting, yes, there is that aesthetic quality that I'm super, super aware of. I'm never going to say I'm not aware of it because if there's one thing I love is art history and painting history in particular. So I'm always going to have all these references in my head of people that have done all these amazing efforts into trying to figure out their own painting. And in my mind, I do what everyone does. I try to gauge and weigh if it worked or not for them. And if it works and if the results are exhilarating, I always say, wow, that is something that in some manner I can adopt. And if I can't adopt it, I can learn from it. When I do those drawing marks, there is a huge sense of comfort in my brain and in my body. When I took that painting of the roses and I started doing those marks, I was like, oh, okay, this is the right path again. This is it. Like, I can actually remember what I was thinking about when I first saw this condition of grayness and flowers and stems and leaves. And I thought about design and composition and shapes. And I wanted to reinforce that. And I was like, yes, that's going to help me get back on track. And I was very happy that then the day after that, yesterday, I was like, ah, because my body was urging like, okay, let's, let's pull this rigor brush out again. And let's do some really nice tight drawing marks. Or maybe let's just do a two session painting. And, um, just leave a block in and then we'll hit some drawing marks and then I can kind of touch it up again and call it done and it's going to look amazing. And I was like, no, no, no. I have to push the idea of masses and colors. Like I said, the idea of this week is to just grab on to the concept of wholeness for as long as we can. What happened with me with the flowers is that I grabbed onto it, but I just slipped and <laughs> it didn't work. And I realized, wow, this is not working, I have to adjust and find a way for it to work. And that's also a cool thing in painting because painting sometimes, it's not just about being concentrated in that one session and just hitting all your strokes. Like you have this perfect stride where you're painting and everything just falls into place beautifully. No, painting many, many times is also about thinking that you know what you're supposed to do and realizing, nah, <laughs> that wasn't the right track. And you have two options. You can either just be frustrated with yourself and put the painting aside and not look at it for maybe six months, maybe a year. And I feel sometimes that the longer you don't look at it, the harder it is to get right back up on the horse and say, okay, let me tackle this beast again. I always feel like, no, you got to get right back up and you have to try to make it work like immediately or as soon as you could do it, not immediately. I mean, you have to, many times you need like a good night rest to just have your brain sort of level again and be able to see things with clarity the next day. But next day I was like, okay, I got to try to do something to make this work because the most beautiful thing about painting and drawing is that there is an aspect of problem solving. But it's not objective problem solving. There's no formulas in painting. And like I said, you could impose other people's formulas onto your painting, but your painting is going to reject them. You know, maybe at a superficial level, it's going to be like, yeah, I look nice. But almost like a, at a moral level, at an ethical level, at the level in which your painting only talks to you and you answer to your painting, that's when it's going to be tough for you to look at your work and know that it doesn't belong to you. So this, this concept of problem solving is something that I've always been excited by because I feel it's challenging. And every time a painting feels like a challenge, I, I'm alive. I feel that that is the moment that I want to paint for, just to put myself in a condition where I can say, what the hell did I put myself into? Like, let me see if I can work things out. Like, let, let me see if I could find a way out. 
And that struggle of trying to find a way out can produce some of the most incredible paintings ever. Because if you really think about it, like if you knew exactly how to solve a problem, it would just be about solving the problem. But if every single time you paint, you are confronted with a problem that you are unaware of, then oof, that is magic. There's nothing in this life that can make you feel quite as alive as just encountering those conditions. Yesterday, I was like, yeah, I, I can't fall back onto something that makes me feel comfortable, even though I feel that it belongs to me, even though that I know, because deep down when I have to answer to myself, I know that, I, that I'm doing this for the right reason, not for just superficial, dumb, um, aesthetic reasons. So I gave myself the chance to do what I said I was going to do at the beginning of the week, which was grab on to that wholeness of your painting, grab onto it for as long as you can. And it was tough. It was very, very tough. And at some point at the beginning of the painting, I thought, ah, it's going to be so disjointed. The colors are not really playing off each other. The shapes are not really exciting. But then there's a moment that it clicked. It's almost like this act of faith where you have to believe that if you keep going and if you have this philosophy where you're just grabbing onto big, big ideas and you realize how those parts are being affected in the way they're represented by those big notions, that's almost foolproof. And it's incredible because... This doesn't mean that this is a style, that this way of working will only produce a way of painting, a specific way of painting. No, no, no. Because an idea of wholeness, the idea of bigness is formulated by you. Nobody else is telling you what that idea of underlying structure that's holding all your painting together is going to be. And nobody is telling you how you are going to interpret that idea through paint. Those two things only you can do. So your painting, even though it's holding on to this philosophy that is at the core of the foundation of painting, is going to be constructed based on the answers that only you can provide for it. And that's what's amazing. That's what's going to make your painting feel your own. Nothing else is going to make your painting feel your own. But sincerity in painting lies in the honesty in which you answer those questions and in which you're able to translate those answers into paint. That's it. That is it. And like I've said before, you need a working, strong bond with your tools so that when you figure out how to translate it into paint, everything just gels together. They are an extension of your mind in the sense that the answer that you come up with is something that you can faithfully translate into paint and you can empower through paint. That's where we want to be. That's our end goal. The whole idea of painting is not, you know, not making a huge painting that will sit at some museum somewhere in the world or that you could sell for millions of dollars. I mean, if you want to do that, fine. But chances are, of the millions of painters that are in the world, only a handful are going to be able to do that. So what does that mean? That the rest just don't know how to paint? They, they don't get it? That they don't have a chance to feel that painting is not useful to them, is not valuable to them? No, of course not. Of course not. This is about getting to know yourself and getting to know yourself through painting. That, that, that's the most important aspect of all. And that's when painting becomes this companion for you. That's not when painting is just this exercise that you do and it's just you put it off to the side and then you do something else. No, you carry these ideas of painting with you wherever you go. It doesn't matter. And you could be painting for half an hour, maybe sketching somewhere in a trip that you're taking, or you could be stuck in a studio for months. It's, ex it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. It's the same act. Today, I wanted to do something that was a little bit uncomfortable for me because, and this is very anecdotal, but we have this palm tree that is right in front of our grocery store that's like a block and a half away from where we live. And every time I would walk by, I would see this palm tree and I would say, I would love to paint that, but that's way too complex for me to paint. Like I, I would see so much information in there that I was like, no, that's too tough. That's actually way, way too hard for me. 
And I would just walk by. And it's almost like I was humiliated by this palm tree, by this nature of this palm tree every time I walked by it because I just realized I, I can't paint it. And one day I was walking by and it was probably like 5.30 in the afternoon, maybe 5. And all the light from the sun setting on the west was just hitting that palm tree. And it was being cut by some of the buildings that are off to the side that are casting a shadow. So, so it's just this beautiful, almost like rectangle of light that's just hitting it. And I was like, okay, this is way too nice. I, I have to convince myself that I'm not going to paint the palm tree. I'm just going to paint light. And I'm going to paint uh, shapes that are designed and carved by light. And I have to try to do this. And I invoked my inner, um, and this is where we bring super cool artists uh, into the mix. I tried to invoke my inner uh, Jennifer McChristian, and she kicks ass. Like, she is incredible. I mean, talk about somebody who's capable of making just, like, sharp decisions. She is insane at doing that. I, I really can't think of, you know, too many people that can just take a palette knife or a brush and just have, again, these just crazy sharp, like razor sharp strokes that just immediately give sense to a painting. They ground a painting. Her paintings are really just groupings of insanely intelligent decisions, like brilliant decisions, really. And she's able to do something that I love, which is try and take something complex and get to the core of where its essence lies and paint that. Her paintings, when you look at them, they, they almost feel like very quick. She constructs her paintings with these very energetic brush strokes. So they give you an idea that it's done very hastily or that it's just like a sketch. You know, it's a very quick sketch. And it's not. I mean, it is bottled up energy. It's like a lightning. Her paintings are remarkable in that sense that her ability to just understand when she has to do broad brush strokes and when she has to do smaller strokes, the softness of the transition from a brush stroke to another one, and then the sharpness to try to get some sort of contrast. Ugh. I mean, it's it's disgusting how good she is. So I tried to think about her. And then I also thought of Bill Ray, William Ray, which I've loved for years and years and years. And the big reason that I love him is that, I mean, Bill has this understanding of himself as a painter, but also as an illustrator. And he has this huge amount of love for illustration, which I absolutely respect. And and he's a huge collector of 60s and 70s illustration. I mean, he owns like a ton of stuff. But I just love that he can understand and contextualize himself. Yes, as a Bay Area painter influenced by Thibaud and Diebenkorn, but he has taken that through his career that has taken him from working in Ren and Stimpy to then doing like gallery paintings to super like almost abstract expressionist work. I love that. I love that. I think he's an incredibly complete artist. Today, I thought I would channel the more urban Bill Ray. And it's about the looseness and then the responsibility in which you land in an area of the painting where you have to make choices that mean something. And I felt that weight today, even though I was horrified by trying to paint this subject matter, I felt like it was something that I could do if I held on to those bigger ideas. Again, this is almost like, when I say act of faith, this is not like religious stuff, but this is almost just like you deep inside knowing that this idea works. That if you hold on to this this concept of wholeness of the integrity of your painting integrity in every sense if you hold on to that then it is going to work your painting is going to almost talk back to you it's going to let you know that you're being honest and oof, today was an incredible day for me because I loved every second of it in the sense that it was something that scared the crap out of me. It was a subject matter that really, really scared the crap out of me because I saw so much in it that I didn't really feel I had the ability to understand it simply. And I just pushed myself. I just told myself, no, you will. Just There's, there's no way I'm going to let myself not understand it simply. Just do masses of color, think about shapes, think about rhythms, and that's it. That's all you got to do. 
And that's what I held on to. And I actually really, really liked this painting. But I think what I'm happiest with is the fact that I told myself, come on, dude, like you can paint this. You know how you're supposed to paint this for it not to feel painful. Just go about it that way. And that's why probably in this painting, I didn't really go to like all these little bits of information that could have been super attractive. And I'm guessing that in far more capable hands than mine, a lot of people can access those very particular qualities of that palm tree and they can speak about, you know, all those tiny little breaks and details on on the leaves. But for me, it was just about understanding it very, very abstractly and seeing if I could just get a little bit closer to understanding the essence of what was there just so it wouldn't frighten me anymore. It wasn't about you know, mastering this palm tree. It wasn't about dominating this painting. That That's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. It's about having, you know, a couple of hours where you work, where you are trying to tell this palm tree to almost let you in and see it for what it is, like understand its essence. And and that was it for me. It blew my mind. It was amazing. It's it's incredible how how much we learn from the things that we try to avoid. And like I said, this was just you know, in my regular walks to the grocery store. And this was this, this huge thing that just we had so much power over me that I loved that. It's not that I'm more powerful than it now. No, it's that we understand each other now. And that is what's absolutely beautiful about it. So that was it for today. I had a blast painting this palm tree. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to do one of these things where I speak about inhaling, exhaling. So I've grabbed onto that idea of wholeness for the uh, foliage that I painted yesterday and the palm tree that I painted today. And I think tomorrow I'm going to do a, a very quick but two session painting where I go back to my drawing again. Because like I said, my drawing, this this need to also understand, to decipher through drawing, that is also very much real for me. That is something that really, really interests me. So I think I'm going to go and do that for tomorrow. And I think that's going to be a cool end of the week just to show the many different ways in which whole and part can strike a balance. And that's what this week is about. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye.